On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Heath Oaks is a millennial mogul whose ignorance on fire led him to fail his way to success. Jenny Anchando is an Emmy award-winning journalist whose sharp eye and biting wit have led to her storied career in television. Together, they tackle today's headlines in a way only an odd couple with a dash of perfect opposite can. So kick back, relax, and join the conversation. This is Second Shot with your hosts, Heath and Jenny. Hey, look, I sound just like him. How's that for a tune out for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, Zach, and Matt, and everybody. Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry hey. Christmas, everybody. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Oh, my God. I'll give a happy holidays for people who are not celebrating Christmas, but are celebrating other things of around course. this time. Yeah. You know what made me so mad? What? I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. Oh, I no. was going to so bring mad. it up last time, but I forgot. I forgot, and I'm still mad. Couple weeks so, back on a couple weeks back, I, as we mentioned, I hosted the Dallas Holiday Parade. That's the official name of the event. And I will say that many years ago, I was definitely somebody who, I don't, I mean, this is just, this is an error in my thinking. <clears throat> I thought, you know, why are we having to call things holiday? Why are we not calling them Christmas? Why, what's wrong with celebrating Christmas? Sure. Here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with celebrating c- Christmas, but there are at least six other holidays around this time that I can think of, and I'm sure there are many more, that are celebrating w- within this same season. So what's the big problem with allowing it to be holiday and allowing other people's holidays and memorable dates to be included? My okay. biggest thing is... I don't is think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Don't, don't speak toward Christmas and do Xmas. That's what I don't like. Yeah. yeah, I don't like that like, either. I don't like that. It I don't takes like, away yeah. the actual reason like, and meaning behind yeah, it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I like that. Like, if you're going to spell it, the holiday, like you said, was it was so funny that person did uh, something posted. It was like, oh, you trying to be all PC with the holiday? Like, no, dummy. It makes business sense because if you just say Christmas, then all the six other holidays, the uh, Jewish uh, business owners and all that are not going to want to go sponsor and pay money to be a part of a Christmas parade if that's right. not what they do. It's business sense. I think it's a it's branding business. thing. Holidays just doesn't sound as fun as Christmas. Holiday sounds like a work thing. You know, oh, holiday. <laughs> it yeah, does. Yeah. Holiday. Like, yeah, or, happy or, holiday. Or like Christmas, Christmas is like a Peppa tight, Pig. it's a word. It's like, yeah, it's a real thing. It's concrete. We just need, we just need a rebrand. Well, Peppa, holidays Peppa all. Pig goes on holiday, which okay. means vacation. But I'm just saying, like, here's the thing. So, uh, we celebrate Christmas. We are, we've been open. We're, we're oh. Christians, but I have no problem. Or I'm, Heath and I, I'm not speaking for like this entire podcast community. Sure. But I have no problem with if you have a religious, a, a cultural, a country of origin holiday around this time. Yeah. I have no problem learning about it, celebrating it, and having it as a part of the, a whole celebration. Right. It just, it really ticked me off when somebody said, oh, you're being PC. Yeah. Well, if PC is allowing other people to celebrate their holidays, well, sure. You're right. I'm PC. I don't care. It's not about the brand. It's about the feeling. Kind, kind of speaking, of, kind cool. of speaking of of like being PC and <laughs> oh gosh. and being right. This one's great. Yeah. Uh, so this comes courtesy of a tweet from Heath Oaks, who is on Twitter at Ignorance on Fire. I think that's where yeah. people can find you. Yes. Yeah, so, or at Heath Oaks, I think on Twitter. Yes. Uh, I'll leave this woman's name out just for the sake of I don't know hot takes. I but, know somebody that knows uh, this person. El- okay. Yeah. Elizabeth uh, tweeted about this. Uh, she got a letter from her neighbors uh, <laughs> in November of. About uh, her kids hitting a fence, uh, hit, hitting their fence with a football. Here's here's the letter because it's nice and tight. This is from uh, an a attorney, lawyer a, a, a it law to office. Yes, yeah, so with letterhead and everything. They had this just is, moved into this neighborhood like th- two yeah, months before. She took a photo of this. This is a real thing with a signature at the bottom, uh, dated to her formally. Uh, this is a courtesy notice. On Sunday afternoon, uh, November 10th, 5.15 p.m., two children were kicking a football in your yard unsupervised when they kicked the football dead center, in quotes, into our metal designer fence. The impact rattled, shook the metal fence. One child immediately apologized, stating, sorry. There did not appear to be noticeable damage at this time. However, each impact, at a minimum, weakens the stability of our fence. <laughs> 
Please be on notice. If there is ever damage as a result of your children hitting our fence, it will result in financial consequences. No different than the hypothetical if I hit golf balls into your yard, hitting and damaging your car. We welcome you and your family into the neighborhood. We're asking you to respect our properties. We plan to respect yours. We do not wish to ever have to bill you as a result of somebody accidentally hitting our fence. Oh my gosh. Welcome to Next Door. Like, <laughs> this is wow. worse. They literally spent money to get a lawyer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, this, is, this is why millennials don't, don't buy homes. Yeah. This is why. <laughs> you can't fix stupid, okay? Oh and this dude is stupid. <sighs> you do know what it would take for me to hold restraint back from not wanting to go to that house and yank him out of his house. Like a little kid, and like almost like spank this grown man for being an <laughs> idiot. Oh my god! I mean, it's ridiculous. You can't like. Not only are you throwing a fit about being in a neighborhood where some kids are kicking around a ball and hit your fence, like, yeah. like I would rather the kids be running around kicking some balls in the yard than the things that kids could be doing. And number two, you're not man or woman enough to walk out your house and walk over there and knock on a door face to face and have a conversation and go. Hey, this fence cost you know it's still yeah. gonna be stupid. I'm, I'm still stupid. gonna I'm still gonna well, call you stupid. Yeah. Um. But at least that that's a little bit better. But no, you want to go pay. I don't know who to feel most sorry for the amount that you spent money to have a lawyer write something up like an idiot, or the people next door that I can't believe who my neighbors are right now. I, I feel like <laughs> we've completely lost the ability to have a human interaction yes. with another person because I think about what would have happened when I was a kid, uh, which would have been in the '80s and. If I were, and I've done, I did this as a kid. Like I was kicking soccer ball around. I broke our own windows plenty of times. Yeah. Um. I I I I, I could have kicked it over into the neighbor's yard and broke one of their windows or or uh, damaged their fence or something like that. And it's totally reasonable yes. for that person to be like, "Hey, can we can we pay for this?" Yes. Like, right. Come on. You you made a dumb mistake. You're a kid. I get it. But like uh, through no fault of my own, now some of my property is damaged. Can we work something out? And they would have gone to my dad or, the, or my mom and said, "Hey, look, your kid was outside." kicked a ball into my yard and broke something. Um, and and I, guess and what? Would not have been an issue. No, and I don't think there's a you problem with that. You would have worked for many weekends in a row to pay for it. Sure, sure. sure. I, I think the underlying idea here, there's not a problem with. This guy spent a lot of money on a fence. Whatever. Like, if if, if, I, if your dumb kid did something and and broke this fence, <laughs> then, then somebody ought to pay for that. Yeah, but yeah, should you have to have a lawyer? You don't need to have a lawyer in this. You could right. just go over and be like, hey, your kid broke my fence. Can we work something out? The kid ain't even broke the fence yet. He's well, just no. warning yeah, absolutely. him. He's so far ahead of the game, it's unreal. Yeah. yeah. Listen, he apologized, but it doesn't matter. It kills me. Like, offense, at least to me. And, yeah, and the kid apologized. Hell, I'm I a I mean, For what, being a kid? Yes. Yes. He apologized yeah. for, oh, I'm sorry that I exist in this world and do kid things. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry for playing in my yard. Next time it'll be a baseball through a window. Like, offense fundamentally is to stop things like this, to stop property from running over from one place to another. It's a property line. Like, somebody, if, you're, somebody if you're building need, a designer and you're upset that people are pushing <clears throat> against it, well, what are we doing here, Somebody guys? needs to slap some sense into him, I'm <laughs> telling you. That, that, okay, well, so uh, now we're that, resorting to violence. Yeah, but, I yeah. would. That, that would be very difficult they not to. They need a secondary fence around their fancy fence. So so what I thought about on this was that fact of the human interaction. Uh-huh. That we are at a point to where a neighbor has to send, feels like they need to have a lawyer send a warning letter about a kid kicking a ball into a fence. You know what I mean? Like, what happened to the going and having conversation? And yeah. I would tell you that, that there's not, like, try that maybe some. Like, I think everybody needs to understand, like, if you're having issues and disagreements, sometimes we let our heads get in our way. We start thinking about all the ways and things this could... Maybe you're sitting there right now and you got an issue you need to resolve with somebody or you need to address. And you keep putting it off because you're scared of having the interaction. And you're making it worse than maybe what it can be in your head. Just go sit down and have a conversation. Don't try yep. to get fancy, cute, and pretty. Just sit down and go, I've got an issue. And here it is. See what the heck happens. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not this craziest <laughs> thing in the world that people cannot have conversations. Sit down like a grown man or a grown woman and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Let them know your issue, and y'all work it out. It's not that complicated. Don't yeah. let another day go by with all of these unresolved things because you want to get lawyers involved in crap already. Just sit down and have a conversation. I love when he gets fired up. <laughs> Don't try to be what, cute and pretty? Yeah. <laughs> Something cute and pretty. Yeah, yeah it's interesting, and, and it also makes me think of, uh, again, kind of going abstract with second shot is, 
um, the things that we kind of jump into all these hoops and make them so much bigger than they are, like the people who go to yeah. the supervisor, the people who work directly with each other, and then they have an issue, instead of telling the person they go to the supervisor, and then they make it a way bigger way deal. Bigger. You thought the person was going to be mad when you confronted them before. They're really going to be mad when you go hop, skip, and jump yeah. to the boss. Yeah. And the other thing, too, tell me this, Heath, if I am right, because I am not a boss, and, and you play one in your role. <laughs> Is it not annoying when people come to you with their little petty issues, come to the boss with, can you deal with this? Oh, yeah. Well, they, they don't need more because they know that I, oh, I I make them handle it with each other like grownups. I mean, it's we're not in kindergarten anymore. So if you come to me with something, you haven't even, most of the time, they haven't even addressed it with the other person. Right. And they're already coming. And I'm like, no. You're grown up. Let's go talk go to have them. a conversation. Yeah. It back, goes back to that sentence that I like to say when people are complaining about issues. And I say, what did they say when you brought it up to them? Yeah. Which is what this lawyer should have asked. End of sentence. <laughs> what did the your neighbor say? Well, the lawyer's going to take the money. Yeah, yeah so. the lawyer's taking Listen, the money, I, I guess. I ain't never known a lawyer that's going to turn down money, so I don't. I, <laughs> I ain't I mean, even hating on the lawyer. Yeah. Because that I could go really long. I feel mm. like we, we have just gotten to the point where we where we assume the worst of anyone around us. And maybe that says more yeah. about us than anything. You know, maybe we would maybe we would have required a lawyer's letter in order to change our behavior. I don't know. I, I'll never. I said it a little flippantly at the beginning, but I, I'll never forget a next door post that I saw um, in our in our neighborhood where someone was parking their car in front of someone else's house, and the person whose house it was was asking, uh, "Who do I? Who, where? Which police number do I need to call to get this car moved? Basically, to have it towed away." And there were enough reasonable people in the chat who said, "Why don't you just go ask your neighbor to move their car?" And if then they have a problem with it, then maybe you need to escalate something. But they never once went over and just said, "Hey, could you maybe move your car out from in front of my car, from in front of my house? But I need to, I need to park there, or I need to move something, or whatever." Isn't that the thing, though? Is that that's like honestly, look, if those kids would have broke the fence and they went over and they, the parents were like, "We're not fixing it," I get it. Sure. Then maybe you do, okay? Sure. But it ain't even happened yet, and you're already throwing a hissy fit like a little bitty two-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> like like Brighton <laughs> didn't even throw a fit on the dance recital stage, and you're sitting here crying like a little baby, okay? Right. So grow up. Let's all be adults this Christmas season and <laughs> holiday season, okay? Holiday. Have conversations with people. If you've got issues, address them. You're making them bigger than what they really are. We'll be back in the second segment of Second Shot. Boom! He makes up words, she translates them. Heath and Jenny host more of Second Shot, coming up on RNCN. Really quick break to invite you to my safe swaps group. So I have been on a journey for the last year or so trying to discover safe swaps, specifically for skincare and makeup. But we're talking about everything, uh, aluminum-free deodorant, healthier pans for your cooking, cleaning products, things like that. So if you have been looking to make a shift health-wise and, you know, really start off 2020 on a different step for you and your family, that is what's going down in the Safe Swaps group, and I'm inviting you to join us. So the group is facebook.com slash groups slash safe swaps. You'll be asked a couple of questions, you know, in terms of why would you want to join and, and what you're hoping to learn. And then I will connect with you with my master list. I have made a master list of the safe swaps for skincare, makeup, home products, baby products, things that are non-toxic, things that contain certified organic ingredients, things that are made in the USA, all the goodness, all the wellness, it is there. So I hope to see you again. It's Facebook.com slash groups slash safe swaps. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. You're all sitting over here after, and it's like a, the most, it's supposed to be Christmas, like, um, episode and I'm, here I am going ranting and raving on the first episode of people. It's <laughs> no, like, how, how merry is that? Can't well, stop holiday you know, spirit. Can't stop, won't stop. That's right. You know, and I, I think some of our most popular episodes have been the ones where Heath has been particularly spicy. Yeah, Heath, what do you have to say about Arby's this Christmas season? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, poor Arby's. I'm Pisces. It's Pisces. It's Pisces. It's mom. Pisces, mommy. It's yeah. Pisces. She says that now when there's something that we give her that she doesn't want to eat. Oh no, mommy! It's Pisces. Yeah. Now, here's it's the, here's the thing though that a two and a half year old can do with you. The the amount of manipulation that she's already learned is very scary to me. It's disturbing. 
She she honestly understands it to another. You know, is anybody that's followed along? Brighton has never slept in the bed with us. Like we've never like laid down. Not because we honestly are like these great parents and keep them out of the bed. It's because yeah. she's never wanted she to. She doesn't want to. Okay. She's not so a like, cuddler. So like she's never been a cuddler. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um and. So there's a, a time a couple weeks back or whatever, and she was sick. Like, look, you know, oh, you let's cuddle Brighton, and you know, we we try to do it some, and we kept asking her if she wanted to cuddle and things, and and I guess she caught on to that mm, that we mm, like to cuddle yeah. with her. Uh, and yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, now, so, yeah. so sure. before it's time to go to bed, <laughs> she obviously will throw out everything in the world and just be like, oh, I I, I want to cuddle, mama. <laughs> I hear her saying, I want to cuddle, mama. And I fell for it. Oh yeah, and then oh, I want. No. Oh well, and I did too. I crawled in her crib and I was in her crib, and she's like, we're cuddling, daddy. We'll cuddle in your bed, daddy, huh? And I'm like, you got me. I'm done. <laughs> just like how she was able to negotiate. Watching TV over books because yeah, she got bad. her mom twisted and turned up. Here's, I mean, a, here's a little lesson in manipulation, though. Yeah. You, you still got what you wanted, right? Like, that's that's an effective True. M- a manipulation. <laughs> yeah. But you still got, got what you wanted. It yeah. was a and, fake and so I, yeah. I, think, I think a lot of people look at that a little sideways and be like, yeah, hey, sure. you're manipulating me. But you know what? If at the end of the day we all are happy, I don't really care how we got that's there. That's true. That's true. Good way to think sense. about it. Yeah. That's a yeah. very Christmas way to think about it. Absolutely. Yeah, <sighs> well, speaking of relationships around the holidays, this headline. We uh, had to have a good headline like this for Christmas, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Courtesy of Jenny. Uh, a woman attacked her boyfriend with an artificial Christmas tree. <laughs> of all the reasons to buy a real Christmas tree and not an artificial one, here's a new one. An artificial tree is easier to turn into a weapon. I just disclaim here, don't, like, don't, Mm -hmm. don't. Uh, There's a 38-year-old woman named Crystal Graham from Clearwater, Florida. Of course she's from Florida. And she and her boyfriend. Florida. Florida. If if we would have done a poll, (laughs) if we would have done, and and look, I love, I lived in Florida. I'd live there tomorrow again. I loved it. Okay, so all my Florida peeps, I love y'all. Yeah. But my (laughs) bless America. There's a a stereotype. Yeah. Uh, A 38-year-old woman named Crystal Graham from Clearwater, Florida got into an argument with her boyfriend on Friday morning, apparently because he was playing the TV too loudly while she was trying to sleep. During their argument, she took apart their artificial Christmas tree and threw it in three sections Mm. at her boyfriend. Standard. He wound up with scratches and cuts on his face, neck, and stomach. Crystal was arrested for domestic battery. Happy holidays. I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that she actually, like, took it apart and threw it. You know, like she wanted to get extra, oh, like, yeah. like no. extra up, Some like get leverage. to three different hits with it. You know, she got to him like three different times versus no. like, like, like that took a little bit of self-control to think <clears throat> that way versus just picking the whole thing. Well, up, you got to right? start with the top part first, right? Because yeah. that's the smallest and easiest to get. And then once that works, you're like, well, I'm <laughs> right. going to go bigger if, and better. If there's anything I know, it's artificial Christmas trees. Yeah. When you're <laughs> looking for a weapon in your living room, uh, you could think maybe grabbing the whole thing and swinging <laughs> yeah. it would work. But those things come in three parts, yeah. right? Yeah. For, for ease of packaging. <laughs> so I'm sure she tried to pick up the whole thing. It immediately fell apart, and then she just started throwing, right? <laughs> best she You've could. thought this through. I fi- yeah, I got the whole thing figured <laughs> out. Yeah. You know, and that's another big controversy in families I'm learning is artificial versus real. I was going to ask what you guys This do. was, well, so living, growing up, artificial was, well, first of all, outside the budget, way outside the budget. Okay. Um, because you can get a permit in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, for at the time it was $3. I believe the permit's now $5 or maybe even 8 to go out and chop down your own Christmas tree. Right. So any artificial tree is going to be more than that. Mm-hmm. Also, it was kind of like a fun family activity, very Idaho-esque. In Texas, we don't have as many opportunities to go to sure, the mountains yeah, no, of, and, and get a tree. So the first time I had an artificial tree was with Heath. And I have to say, um, it was a little easier. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Definitely easy. And there's a, there's a big controversy regarding which one is more eco-friendly. And I have not done enough research to have a definitive answer on that. Yeah, I've heard they're like terrible on the environment to produce. I don't know what goes into an artificial tree, but yeah, no. cut down your own tree is a good time. If you can do it, you should. Yeah, and if you can do it legally, yeah. you got to get the right. permit and do the. No, no, if, where I come from, you don't need no permits for anything. To be you fair, just don't do it. it is a lot more fun to sneak into your neighbor's back back forty, right, and right. chop one down back oh, there. Oh yeah, but we didn't do no permits out <laughs> where I'm from. Around here, you're gonna Not get entirely. a Christmas oak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, Christmas oak. Yeah, <laughs> a cedar tree. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> Oh. So, uh, attacking your boyfriend in three parts. Um, <laughs> oh, what are we doing here, guys? It's the holidays, <coughs> right? Here's, I just wanted, I, I honestly, more so my second shot on this was, any frustrations you have that you were looking at coming up, maybe like tomorrow being Saturday, you've got some family coming in town, maybe mm-hmm. on Christmas Last Eve, maybe shopping. all these things, like, there can be anxiety and, you know, Bob's going to get political and Mary Sue's going to, you know, hate it and it's probably going to be this. Like, take a chill pill. 
maybe not let things like maybe this would be a good time to reflect and say you know i'm not going to let things get to me this year maybe you're having those situations and maybe you know you don't let bob get under your skin you know maybe them arguing anything doesn't bother you like like what kind of uh weight can be lifted off of you if you just don't care as much about what they say and do and then just enjoy being around it and maybe find humor in the fact that they're always going to get in arguments over this or that right like and i'd also encourage you that this is the time in the season to forgive you know like you don't know how many more you have with some of them maybe it's a time to look up and reflect and forgive some of them to where you're not harboring those things around to where you don't let it bother you what they say you know yeah, yeah. like i think it's just this is a perfect time to go <clears throat> just chill yeah and just this chill. is to myself i need to chill like yeah. I'm, I'm definitely not you the most chill, chill. like I, I need to chill chill pill yeah Heath. um so so I, I will a lot of people have the stance of no religion no politics at big events big gatherings family things things like that i will take a, a little bit of a a different stance if i can with uh -oh. regard to your close family if you're looking to actually be closer with them I think sometimes when we say just don't discuss it, avoid it, I think that keeps us separate and it keeps us from understanding one another. What if you went in and said, maybe not on Christmas Day, maybe maybe like the day after at some point during the week of, of, of your trip. What if you went in and said, I do want to talk about this and I do actually want to learn more about why. And saying that not with the goal of spouting your own preference, but actually learning what that loved one, if you want to have a close relationship with that person, putting yourself into their shoes and actually trying to understand why they feel the way they do if you have a big difference um, can bring you closer together. You still may not come to fully agree with them or align with them, but I think it can soften your edges a little bit with regard to opening up your heart to where they're coming from. Yeah, instead of trying to worry about how to reply with it and letting it, you know, that's what it's kind of like, just don't let it get on your skin because if you do what you're talking about, and try to understand. I'm just saying, like, I think it's try okay to, to have the hard discussions with your family. Yeah, but it's try to understand some, them. And right. Yes, and try to understand. Some familiar, some familial relationships are so tender that you don't want to go there, that you're just trying to kind of keep afloat. But if you feel like you're on a little bit of solid ground, then I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, hey, you know what, I've, I've noticed you've been kind of, you know, going down this direction. I would love to hear more uh, about it. Um, the only thing is, if you're going to bring this up, you have to be and know, like in your heart of hearts, that you are actually open to hearing their perspective. Yeah. If you're not in that place and that's fine, right. then I would yeah. not bring it up. If you're coming well, from a judgmental perspective, you're going to be going down the wrong. Yeah. Way. Well, it's funny because that, that leads into what I was going to say about this: the the art of the the personal de-escalation, right? Nobody needs to call the cops when their girlfriend is throwing a Christmas tree at them. <laughs> it's not up to the cops to figure out your relationship because they'll just arrest her and can charge her with domestic battery. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to going home for the holidays and talking to your family, I don't think it's you need to be ready to, to listen to other people. You need to be ready for, for your family to be very confident in how they feel because when you're around family, you're not around strangers. You can say exactly what you think, and those are the people who are closest to you, right? And they're going to say how they feel, and sometimes they'll get rowdy, and they'll shout it, and they'll, they'll get real loud. And it's real hard to deal with. So if you're going to talk to folks about politics, and maybe you should, or religion, or what have you, uh, just have have an out on that. Have a way to de-escalate that situation in case they start to get nuts, because they not they may not be as emotionally ready as you are. Mm -hmm. So have a way to just be like, okay, you know what? Let's chill, whatever. Go for a walk. No. Have another drink. I don't know, but like that's that's an important part of that whole thing. I think be I, be ready to de-escalate. I think one of the better things is. I remember it is in three parts, so pick it up at the bottom so you can get the force of all of it. Right, you know? yeah. Like a jab. It'll separate as it goes. <laughs> you know, Ooh. like you got to pick it up at the bottom and hold right. it at the top so you can really get a lot of power into them if you got to hit them with if it. If you're not ready to go from the tree skirt up, you're yeah. doomed. Yeah. yeah, like that's, yeah. you're going to have to go from the base. Yeah, that's yeah the you, whole you, thing. you're in trouble with it also. I mean, look, it, here's the thing uh, relax, enjoy the time around who you've got. There's some people out there that holidays are completely different. Um, type of issue for them because a lot of them aren't, aren't around anymore and sometimes that can be much worse so maybe take a chance this holiday to holiday season to kind of reflect and enjoy and 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 love the people you're around no matter what their views and beliefs are and and come in with an open heart and maybe just trying to if you're going to do it understand where they're coming from try to learn versus trying to come at it from a judgmental point of view and take a chill pill relax enjoy your time it doesn't happen often we'll be back in a minute on the third segment the second shot Not 
<laughs> That's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Heath and Jenny still to come. Okay, we wanted to take a quick minute to tell you guys about a company called Energy Ogre. So Heath and I have been using this company for years to save money on our electricity. Uh, We've told you guys about it for for months and months and months too. So basically what they do is they shop around your electricity and then they find the lowest option and then they manage it. So you know how if you notice your rates are going up, you might call around, but, but who really does that? So they do that for you. The deal is that it costs $10 a month and if they can't save you anything, then they you get the $10 back. So for us, what we noticed is it cut our bill at least in half. So we're talking, we were upwards of 200, maybe a little more than $200 a month. Now we're down to 100, yes, even in the blazing summers here in the Dallas area of Texas. So it's energyogre.com. So here's Ogre. It's O-G-R-E. So E-N-E-R-G-Y-O-G-R-E dot com. And they actually give us a deal for Second Shot listeners. So if you would like to use it, the discount code is Second Shot. So you can try it for free and see how it works. Again, it's really not a risk because if you get on there and they can't save you any money, then they don't charge you anything and you'll get to try it out for free with the code Second Shot. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. I love watching my shaming work. Even though it's Christmas, I'm still going to shame people, right? Hey, look, this is perfect time. You're going around with a bunch of family and friends that maybe you do think need a little picking up. It's time to tell them about our podcast, people. Tell them about it. Show them how to find it and let them download it, okay? Just take their phone, subscribe to the show, and let the rest figure itself out. We've been doing this for a while. I promise when you go home for the holidays or wherever you're at, somebody there has heard about this podcast thing but doesn't really know what it is. And as soon as you bring it up, they're going to be like, yeah, what is a podcast? How does that, what is that thing? And you'll tell them, I got the perfect one for you. It's called Second Shot. And then you have to go to their phone, and you have to find the podcast app, and you have to hit subscribe, and then show them how to listen. That's how I've gotten so many of my friends. And I will say, for some reason, we're on episode almost 150. Wow. Only recently have (laughs) some of my close girlfriends started to listen, which is fine. It's so awesome to hear them kind of trickle in. Awesome. People don't know if they don't know. Yeah, take they their don't. phone. And a lot of and people review. still don't know where to find podcasts at or even what they really are. <laughs> right. Your so mom th- hasn't found it. Yeah, they, they, she said it was over Thanksgiving. No, they, they still watch it just on Facebook, basically, yeah. is what they do. Because yeah. they're just like still, and it's really easy. It's already a purple icon already on your app, but whatever. It's so nice when you actually <laughs> have it. And we have we have ratings and reviews. Fine examples of some good folks who have, who have given in to Heath's consistent shaming. Uh, and told us what's up. Heath, you want to go first or should I? Go ahead. All right. Uh, my favorite odd couple from Rafter 1973. Discussion Without Division. Finally, a show that can delve into a topic with fairness, humility, respect, and humor. This is worth your time. Thanks, Rafter. That's an, I like that review because that's yeah. what we try to do. Yes. Yeah. I, I, think we, I think there's a way to give a good entertaining about um, many different topics and ideas and being respectful while giving your own opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that, that that's actually a possibility. And I, I, I know a lot of people in today's world like do not know how to <laughs> they do don't that. Believe but, it. <laughs> but I do believe that it's absolutely possible mm-hmm. to be respectful of others' differences than yours. And I dig the concise format because when it comes to when it comes to algorithms and promoting things, Apple doesn't care how long it is. I've left reviews on shows that said I like the show, five stars, like super easy. You know, you can leave whatever you want. Be yourself. I've been do, still doing my um, my review karma and trying to review other podcasts that I like. I try to do too. To, yeah. Yeah. To, it's to a good practice. Share the love. Heath and I just got on a really good one, you guys. I, oh. um, it's called Believed. Yes, that's Believed. It will make you angry. Oh, it's about um, <laughs> the Larry Nasser. Ooh, Larry Nasser, <laughs> USA Gymnastics. Oh, oh wow. it's a little disturbing. I would say yeah, even yeah. just be. You have to story. make sure you're in the right mind it's to, to listen to it. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. And I had another review because, again, there's, see, and, and I know that this guy is a new listener to the show, so he's already leaving a review, so everybody else should feel extra worse if you've been listening a long time and not left a review. <laughs> uh, from the Sales Ninja, and I actually know who that is because the guy that I, that I met several months back, and Zach, um, it's, uh, but the Sales Ninja's uh, brand yeah. that he has that he sells some sales um, training and I stuff. I uh, chemistry on fire. I've been binge listening to Second Shot for the past several weeks. Heath, Jenny, and their team are simply fantastic, relevant, timely topics, fantastic chemistry. What else can you ask for? Great for mindset, learning, and some laughs and joy. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate you taking the time for that, buddy. 
No problem. You're not talking about me, right? Because <laughs> the priest said Zach, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I know that sale ninja. I don't actually yeah. have somebody else. But thanks. You're the anti-sale ninja. <laughs> it's Zach's true. the guy with all the skills who cannot sell anything. <laughs> cannot him. sell anything. <laughs> he needs the yeah. other Zach's program. New Year's <laughs> resolutions. I'll get into it. I'll make sales. It'll happen. All right. I can be anything I want to be. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're butting up against the end of the year, and we haven't talked about, like, resolutions or vision boards or anything like that, but maybe we will first of the year or maybe with that last episode before the end of the year yeah. comes out. You never know. Perhaps you're you right. You never know. Yeah. So, are we ready for the question of the week? Sure. Do it. Okay. That accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little, I like Dirt? your Is normal <laughs> Texas accent. I'm just not sure what that was, but I'm going to proceed. I could be whatever I want to be. <laughs> and I'm going to ask everybody question of the week. We want to keep it kind of light and fun this week since last week's was really introspective and maybe a little bit deep. Yeah. What is your favorite holiday tradition? And I say holiday not to eliminate Christmas. I'm not being PC. I'm doing it because not everybody celebrates Christmas and that's okay too. So what's your favorite tradition around this time of year? Holiday tradition. Um, let me know. What is yours, babe? Favorite. Well, it's not really, these are kind of, I got a couple of little things. They're just uh, more just like this kind of always happened, right? That, okay. I, that I look back on now really think how cool. Well, number one on Christmas Eve, always watch 24 hours of the Christmas story. Like, okay. like yes. on TNT and stuff, yeah. they, they have the 24 hours of Christmas story. Like as long as I can remember, we watch the Christmas story on repeat over and over sure. and over. That's like one of those movies that can't be ever like... But it's just the most epic movie ever. Timeless. Like, it yeah. is absolutely yep. great. Still great today. Another kind of thing you had to look back on, like, when we were kids, okay, um, we would get up for Santa, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing was, is whenever we got up for Santa, we couldn't wake my parents up. <laughs> we couldn't wake my parents up out of bed till 7 a.m. And we couldn't open any presents on the tree. But when my brother and I got up, we could go and see Santa. What's funny is an interesting. Oh, wait, you got to go look at Santa before they woke up. Yeah, we could what do Santa. In the world? But we yeah. couldn't do Christmas presents. What kind of? What? Yeah, but didn't presents. they want to so see you open Santa? Running? Well, no, Santa was open. Santa was un right. unwrapped. So we, and had, just we had the there. same. Right. We had the same setup where yeah. there were family presents yes. and then the the few Santa presents were unwrapped. Yeah. So they were just sitting in front of the tree. Yes. Yeah. They sit in front of the tree, and you go, and my brother and I would play. What's funny is if anybody knows me, my brother, you. My my <coughs> my brother was the one. I was the one who didn't sleep very much and was wiry and all that. My brother not, but my brother was always the one who couldn't sleep and would wake me up for Santa at the <laughs> crack of dawn, three or four in the morning. Even though like I would, you would think I would be the one doing it, but no, it was always my brother. Wow. So there you go. I love the <laughs> I love the waiting till seven, having it all time out like that. That's so special. But I will also say I do not want to carry on that tradition of having Brighton open Santa without me. She went opening Santa. Santa's open already. Well, I know, right, but no. I want to see I want to see the excitement. You need a nest camera. I, oh, wake me up at two a.m. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Wake me up. Those are great memories. Yeah. And we'll have to make sure and do that this year is um, to watch that. Yeah. Yeah. To carry on your tradition. What about you, Matt? Um, mine, I think, uh, I feel like I've talked about this before, but mine has always been going out to my grandma's house, yeah. uh, which is in the country. And, uh, when I was younger, it was about, I would always get to take, um, you know, one thing that I had underneath the tree and I'd take it to my grandma's house. Cause we'd go there, we'd get up early, we'd do stuff at, at my, my parents' house. And then we'd, we'd go over there for breakfast. Um, and so I'd take one thing and they would always act so excited, even though they probably didn't even know what it was. My my grandma would be looking at it. My grandpa would be looking at it. Um, and nowadays, uh, you know, grandpa's passed away. My grandma's moved back to Virginia, but she does come home because we still have family on that land. And now we still go out there on Christmas morning and have breakfast and do everything there. And, uh, you know, it's it's different. Now it's my chance to go back out to the country and I bring my dogs and yeah. Uh, my beagle loves running around through the woods and he ran away a couple of years ago and that wasn't so much fun, but oh. um, it's oh, still, God. it's still a, uh, we got him back. He was just, oh, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, my no. God, I remember that episode. I <laughs> yeah, remember that actually. Yeah. Yeah. We did get him back. He was just hanging out with the cows. Kind of did the um, Charlie thing. <laughs> and, oh yeah. Charlie did that recently. He's a city dog. Um, oh. But yeah, it's my opportunity like a couple of times a year. And this is one of them to go back out to the country and just kind of get to enjoy that because I, I miss that. So that's uh, it's a nice tradition to hold on to it. Uh, I feel like I've talked about mine on the podcast somewhere too, probably somewhere along the way we talked about this, but uh, every Christmas Eve, uh, my parents and my sister and I, our little family in Texas, get together and watch the 1947 classic, It's a Wonderful Life. 
Uh, Frank Capra. Yes. It's actually 1946, I think. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the story of George Bailey uh, uh, discovering that maybe he feels like he's led his whole life in Bedford Falls uh, and wasted it, uh, and discovering ultimately that like it turns out he influenced a lot of people in, in, in small ways and made the world a better place for it. Uh, we watch that every Christmas Eve, and it always r- hits me in a different way. I think the best kind of art in life does that, right? Like, you can come back to it years later, and you're like, yeah. oh, man, that's a totally yeah. different message. Um, it, it's super humbling. And it's black and white, and it's two hours and 15 minutes, and everybody thinks it's three hours long, and it's not. It's just slow. Um, but, man, I love that movie. That movie influences influenced why I went to film school and, like, why I, I do what I do. And it's such a humbling thing to watch at the end of the year and feel like, you know what, if you don't feel like maybe – you accomplished as much as you wanted. Maybe you didn't get there. Maybe you didn't do everything you wanted to do. It's totally cool because no matter what, you're here and everybody else is here. And like, it, it worked out. It comes around. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I love that movie. Muppet Christmas Carol it. also. Don't sleep uh, on yeah, sure. Muppet also Christmas Muppet Carol. Christmas Carol. Hey, Michael yeah. Caine plays a brilliant <laughs> it's an amazing Scrooge. He plays it so straight. He doesn't even act like he's looking at Muppets. I love it. It's a big Jenny. What's yours? I just I love hearing these, and I bet all the all of your families will love to hear this if they listen to to know how meaningful those traditions are. Because mm-hmm. you know parents work do work so hard to create memories and to create traditions. So I'm sure they would love to hear their adult sons saying, "Yes, that made an impact," and I love doing that. Yeah. So I will just say that for ours, um, a lot of them revolve around sort of the the faith as- aspect of it. Leading up to it, we ha- would always have the advent calendar, and I have two younger brothers. One's four years younger. One's about eight years younger, and so we would alternate the month leading up to Christmas, reading the Advent calendar, and you think, oh gosh, it's, the same th- <laughs> it's that same story. It's always going to be that same story, but each year I would learn something new about what the actual meaning of Christmas was. So I loved doing the Advent calendar, and we would always fight over who gets to read the Christmas book, like the the last book at the very end of the Advent calendar. So that was always big, and they would remember, oh, Joe, we got it last year. This year's Gus's turn. Sure. Um, so, so that was fun. And then I, I loved Christmas Eve service, getting really dressed up there was a lot of pomp and circumstance sometimes santa would be there somebody a candle sort of thing yes so well if we did if we did midnight mass it was always a candle and sometimes earlier um but it would just it was decorated so beautifully and then the children would do when we were kids we would be in the play you know and then as we got older we'd get to watch the play so those are just i mean those are just great memories with our with our church and with my brothers and just having everybody home um the pause and the chaos nobody had soccer practice or <laughs> dance practice or cheer or yeah. anything like that being home was really special and then we had the super random tradition of having a calzone for dinner on um, nice on christmas eve yeah like <laughs> which is great <laughs> who doesn't love some who doesn't love calzone? Sure. some calzone i mean there Roll are so many pizza. i could go on and on and on um, my family is really big with traditions but i love hearing everybody else's and heath and i've been thinking a lot about the different traditions we're going to add into Brighton's life. And we've got some time before she actually realizes what they are. So we've got a couple of years to iron out our plan. There you go. Where can they find you? JennyAnchondo.com. And um, my gosh, we're going to hopefully talk to you again before the new year um, on Instagram. Search Second Shot Podcast on Instagram. That's where we're putting out the questions of the week, too, so that you all can respond to us as well. Um, Jenny and Chondo on all forms of social media. Thank you guys so much for listening. At Apple Zach on Twitter and Instagram. This is probably my last one for the year. I'm getting married. Woo-hoo. Oh, my gosh. Oh we didn't gosh. get to talk about I'll it. I'll talk about it when we get back. We got to go. No. It's fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I'm, we're doing the honeymoon later, so that's not, that's not going to happen. Experiences to come. But have a great year. Uh, it's so much fun hanging out with you guys. Uh, thanks a lot, gang. It's good. Matt Stoker 1 on Instagram, also in the Facebook group. Come check it out. Guys, I hope everybody has a very, very Merry Christmas and any happy holiday that you're celebrating. And relax, enjoy your friends and family, and enjoy any of the things that you can this holiday season. Ed Heath Oaks at Ignorance on Fire. I love y'all. See you next time. Thank you.